Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to the channel Dev Chanel's 48 Squirrel. It's a family affair, honey. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for um new interactions, new family members coming into the scene, interacting and posting in the comments section. Thank you, family. We're gonna read them off as we're gonna say thank you and welcome. Come back as often as you want to to the house where we sit down and we discuss topics of discussions thank you for stopping by terry massey linda c delane j diva d and kathleen fullwood thank you so much greetings and salutations safe travels to each and every one of you all until we see each other again on whatever video i'm putting out and i'm in, i'm asking and pleading with you to come on over here and talk to me okay and be one of the faithful few of the vastly many that come over to the house and we sit and congregate eat with each other um drink with each other and talk shit with each other when we're talking about these um subject topics i may be putting out on our channel you see how i did that i didn't say my channel i didn't say your channel i said our channel see see we fit like hand in a glove yes we do but we finna get right on into this fake fraudulent foolery fuckery piece of shit they gave us tonight yes my four elves are in full effect and rita hopkins little uh lady love dear heart Okay, girl, you use them four Fs anytime you get ready. Any of my family members can use my um, four Fs to state any type of noun, verb, or any kind of adjective you want to put on with those four um, adjectives I give y'all when I'm talking about a subject. If you want to talk to it because somebody on your ner on your nerves at work, you want to call them all that, just say it under your breath because you need your job. You can't come over here and live with me at the house, okay? We can't have all that. We want you to be doing your due diligence and acting appropriately whenever you step out that door. But when you are on your time, you can act however you want to whenever you want to, okay? Just keep it cool, calm, and collected and we all will go far. Yes, so yeah. Yes, when you use the four else, make sure you use them correctly and constructively. Okay, that's what Deb is telling you to do. Deb Chanel, okay? Don't go out there acting a damn fool, okay? Don't do that now because you need shelter, clothing, um, food. There's about the, uh, three elements. And you need some uh, health care insurance. So, all that requ requires um, stability on someone's job. Unless you're an entrepreneur out there doing a the thing. But you still need health care. All right. But, I uh, had to thank my family for stopping by. Wherever they were on their highways, byways, they saw fit to come on over to the crib. And sit a spell with me. Cock a squat, how they said. Put up their heels in my escape voice. Was kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down at the SKB. We're kicking it. Just kicking. Yes, that's what we're doing over here. We're kicking it. All right. But we're going to go into this um, whatever kind of piece of mess they gave us tonight. Okay. <sighs> it was something to get through. It was something to get through. But I'm going to tell you my MV player of tonight was none other than tanya sams yeah she kept her cool she was calm cool and collected and made kenya more look like a damn fool because she was up there doing all that cussing that hollering and you know uh tanya with her beautiful self her educated self her class self just kept saying you know uh do you have to use such vulgar vulgarity i mean do you have to be cussing folks out all the time can you call them uh bitches and you coming to the table talking about i dress very nicely when i'm ready to drag a bitch i mean come on now when we say bitches we be like trying to say it in a nice tonation the nice way but you're talking about slaying this girl and holding her tight and shaking her every which way but loose. Okay, you're a cast member. But you got to see all these cuss words. And you call yourself being a representative of many, uh, being an ambassador for infertility, uh, IVF treatments and stuff. You call yourself being, uh, what, it, what were you, Miss America? U.S. Miss USA? Hell, I can't remember. But I know you were the uh, pageant queen trying to uh, represent the country and shit. And you're going around here acting like this. Girl! Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. If they had to do a poll and say, 
uh, who's been acting strange out there. Do we need to stress some titles? Honey, they'll be coming at your door. First and foremost, Kenya. First and foremost. And I think you need to clean your stuff up a little bit because your daughter going to be looking at all this stuff fairly soon because them babies are growing so beautifully. Uh, PJ and, and Brooklyn. And, um, hell, before we know it, uh, Blaze going to be on Grown Up, too. And got Ace over there looking all handsome and stuff. So, we got to set the tone. Because this shit going to be archived. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to be they gonna go on, be going back looking at how you acted a damn fool on this particular show. Made some money for the fam. But, in high, uh, we call it hindsight, I don't think it's going to be a good look, King. So, I mean, you could get your point across and stuff, but... Do you have to be calling females, female dogs all the time? Do you have to really get them that name and, and go with it? Because you ain't saying, like, the word in a nice tonation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm riding for her and just like that. And third, yeah, I, I just don't know. But I ain't want to talk about that. I wanted to talk about Miss Cynthia Bailey going over there seeing Mr. Mike Hill over there in Los Angeles. And them some little apartments, child. Little condiment. I don't know what the hell he live in, really. But that's some little ass shit from the outside. And it didn't look too much larger when we got in the inside. But my concern I was having when uh, Cynthia was rushing over there to L.A. seeing her man, her fiancé, her lover, her everything. Why she ain't had no key, y'all? Why she did not have a key to get in the door? Why was she out there bamming on that door like she was uh being followed and she was in a horror movie trying to get inside real quick fast in a hurry and wasn't nobody listening to her in the inside why she ain't have a key why she ain't have a key mike that's what i'm asking you right about now why your fiance that you love you trying to marry you trying to put on this that and the third and be a good husband why cynthia don't have a key okay and nowhere else supposed to be up there living with you too I, I'm, I'm not understanding this setup. That's why I'm calling it. What again, my own family? Fake, fraudulent, fuckery, and foolery. Shit going on here. All right? You can distinguish the else however you want to. Just however they fall out your mouth. Okay, but I'm giving my four else on Mike. What kind of shit you think you got us looking at, Mike? And you want us to believe you and Cynthia have a true union? And stuff of that nature. I don't understand. I don't understand, honey. I mean, I know y'all ain't trying to divide up the assets right now. Y'all trying to do that little thing candy that I'm doing uh, with um, the prenup. And you come in as, you know, broke or rich and whatever we made together, that's ours. And we can spend it accordingly. I mean, yeah, you could decide on that. But don't you think your fiance need a key? Don't you think she need a key? Why you didn't go pick her up at the airport? Why was she arriving in her Uber or whatever you, her taxi cab or however they get down in Los Angeles? Why you didn't go pick her up from the airport? Okay. Ain't that what a man you supposed to be doing for your fiance? Since you put this big ass rock, and I think it's least, I, I'm beginning to think the ring he put on Cynthia Bailey's uh, finger is least. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm like, baby girl went up there to visit her man, her, her soulmate, her, her second husband to be. And she didn't even have a key to get in the inside of the damn house. She like there ringing the doorbell, ringing, 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 bamming on the door, bamming on the door, bamming on the door. Can't get in. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Yes, and Kayla, his uh, daughter, biological daughter by another uh, wife that he cheated on. Alleg well, hell, it ain't allegedly. He actually said it and put it in his book. So, yeah, he cheated. It's by one of his baby mamas, okay? But uh, it's all a family affair with him. That's right. We're going to be talking shit all day long. Every time I get on a video, it's going to be a family affair. You tell me what y'all thought about it. I tell you what I thought about it. Women, hell no. I tell you what I thought about it. You tell me what you thought about it. And then we have an, another discussion off camera. Okay. I just uh, talk with y'all in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? I have to monitor that because we have people that come in that say they want to be a part of the family affair or they just sneaking in and, and getting in where they think they can fit in. And then they want to tear me down and want to tear my family down. Hell no. Nah, we like four flat tires or we like a whole 18 wheeler. You come for one of us. We 
we coming for you and then we're gonna throw you out and throw away the key and say don't uh, don't come back trespassing we're gonna call the popo yes we are because you're not allowed you're not welcome okay so that's how we roll over here in case nobody really knew which all of my day ones know but sometimes i try to introduce the house rules to uh new family members that want to come in and of course if you hadn't got used to elijah hell he in one of my videos where we had to showcase him uh, but yeah, he gets on our nerves, but we have to love him and, and do what we got to do and, and maneuver around him. Hold on. Elijah! 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 Okay, we shutting you out. We shutting him out, Jay. And he gonna be at the door trying to get back in. But anyway, yeah! Uh, yeah, I saw that mess. I saw that mess, and I was like... I said, Sean, come on in here. You know, I was talking to my daughter. I said, you got to see this mess. But she didn't quite make it to the scene I wanted her to see. But I know my family saw it. I know my YouTube family saw that shit. She was knocking on that door, ringing that doorbell. I'm like, Cynthia, and you say you want to marry this man, girl. Then they turned out and had a party at the house or a get together where Mike had nine women show up and every last one of them women was nice looking okay some of them looked kind of a little questionable like they could have been lesbians or whatever but uh you know and I'm only going from like the macho side trying to dress like a man and be like a man but you know have feminine looks and stuff and then you had Kayla his daughter who she looks totally different I'm glad they did that playback where they were at the jewelry store looking for uh, a ring for Miss Cynthia Bay and God know it. I'm like, is, is all our young youths turning to be lesbians now? The, the females come like, she sure look, was talking uh, manly. And unless she had a cold or something, this baby girl had a cold, and I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, girl, we're talking like she was manly or something. I'm like, damn, you know, what's going on? Wait, wait, is our young youths just sw uh, flipping the script because they damn want to? They just want to be out there just doing shit just to be doing shit, confusing the older people, such as myself, the seasoned ones. Okay, but anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, girl, uh, girlfriends came, about nine of them, and only had two guy friends, and I'm like, well, damn, and then, you know, uh, Cynthia was like, well, you know, they playing back tapes, or she was telling Mike, you know, uh, how many guy friends you got, because I don't think I hear about you having girlfriends all this time, yeah, you should be worried, Cynthia, your eyebrows should be up, like somebody just got them strung up from the, uh, the roof, and it would never come down, you know how you put that arch with the uh, crayon, trying to make you some uh, a filling in, in your eyebrows and stuff, child you should be like a, a a clown and went crazy because mike's sitting up there having a house full of women and like i said ain't none of them looking unattractive you know what i'm saying ain't none of them okay and i'm like okay he's supposed i bet he don't slept with every last one of them <laughs> that, that was just going through my mind as the producers was just being shady and getting a good look at every last woman that was presented in that house when they were doing that filming they got every last clip of them women and they were nice looking you hear me and i'm like well, wait a minute this joker done slept with every last one of them women i do believe and he was like i'm these are my sisters and i'm like mike you full of shit i said cynthia if you marry that man girl you don't come back crying to us. Don't, definitely don't come back crying to me. Because he's showing you everything in plain sight. And you ain't taking none of it in. Or you taking it in. And you think that, you know, you're going to be the make, be the different one. He's going to treat you right. Girl, please. That man ain't learned nothing. He ain't learned nothing. And evidently, his daughter know he's full of shit. Because she was sitting up there crying. In the midst of them having a... Uh, I guess uh, I would say housewarming, but it's not that. I guess you could say a fiance uh, warming where they were talking about Mike's, you know, indiscretions he's had and how many women he's pretty much been with and why he don't have more guy friends. And I don't know what made the baby girl break down, but she broke down and stuff. So yeah, I'm like, good Lord. And she's supposed to be almost going to college herself. Too emotional. I said, Mike, you need some counseling for your girls, okay? Because that, they ain't, mm -mm, some ain't right. Some ain't right. Some ain't right with that one. That last one, I can tell you that much. She goes upstairs and 
I don't know, you know, they only show up just a little clip here and there. I don't know how long that little uh, fiancé warming, meaning Cynthia being the guest of honor. She's getting a chance to meet all his girlfriends. But I'm going to say them the ones he done laid up with, okay? And they just see him or they could not become girlfriend or boyfriend for whatever reason. And they just called each other, you know, dipping and dabbing with each other when they need to have some maintenance done. And they don't trust nobody. I mean, that's where I'm seeing it go. Okay. That was Jaden. That was Chance's baby boy. Trying to think he gonna eat up my earring. He crazy as hell. But anyway, getting back to him. I'm sorry about that, y'all. Where was I? Yeah, baby girl, she had got got sent up staff, which I didn't understand why she was in the midst of them anyway. That was a truly grown and sexy type uh, environment, party, get together, however you want to say. And it wasn't really meant for his uh, young daughter's ears, or hell, any of his daughter's ears, because they were basically showing how unfaithful he was and probably how... He missed out being in a household with both of his two daughters. Because I'm thinking they're from two different parents uh, or two different two different ladies. So, I don't think they have the same uh, mother, her and his other uh, daughter, Kayla. And, shit, I don't forgot the, uh, the oldest one. But it just is what it is. So, it seemed like she's still kind of feeling some kind of way. So, he told the women... And pretty much left since he ass down there too. He had to go check on his daughter. See what I'm saying? See, that's what I'm saying. When you get in a marriage of an already made family and you don't really get the dynamic straight or how you're supposed to fit in that dynamic, we still on this I, I, I. Well, he should have said, Cynthia, come on upstairs with me and let's see what's wrong with baby girl. You know, did I say something wrong? Hell yeah, you said something wrong and you put her in the wrong environment. She ain't had no business up there. Uh, in a deep conversation that y'all were having with all these women over your house, uh, making your daughter feel some kind of way, like you ain't changed, you ain't changed, Dad. You still messing with all these women, and you finna bring Cynthia in this whole mess, and they're gonna be fucked up, pretty much. That's probably what was going through her mind, or it could have been going through her mind that uh, she see how bad uh her mother was treated by you because you ain't learned that you still got women as your your best friends or how you see it when you should have some men or you know because anybody in their right mind ain't nowhere in the world i'm finna marry a man that he still congregates with all these pretty women around here and and trying to make me think i think i'm the one and you finna have me in no uh therapy counseling session um uh, <laughs> you know where well, we going because i'm feeling like i ain't the only one or i'm getting counseling from some of his girlfriends <sighs> Trying to tell me about my man, they man, and you know, for for it turns out she gonna be finding out that he been with all them women. You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about just in no friendly platonic way. No, he been with them like between the sheets. Uh uh, ooh, baby, baby, let my love surrounding me. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know them the eyes of brothers. I think I got the lyrics wrong, but y'all know where I was going with it. Yeah, it's on in between the sheets. That's where he went with all nine of them women. <laughs> he ain't fooling me. I mean, he might not have been with all nine, but he don't been with a, a couple of them. I can tell you that much. But anyway, that's just my woman intuition uh, playing its part here uh, throughout this video. But yeah, they finally bounced they sales. Well, you know, Mike went first because he said he'd go check on his baby girl. And I'm like, damn, man, you skin married? Ain't, ain't Cynthia supposed to be a part of that very damn going on? Well, don't you supposed to be telling her, escort you upstairs and say, let's go see what's wrong with baby girl? But no, he said, I'm going to go check on my daughter. See, that's what I'm saying. When you get into these already made up families, you forget that you're bringing somebody else in and you just don't go solo no more. Okay, you don't go solo dolo no more. Now, when you're trying to be a couple, you're trying to be remarried. Uh-uh. That child is Cynthia's child. Just like she has some issue with um, baby girl Noelle, you supposed to go up in there too and find out what's going on. Because it's going to affect every last one of y'all. But he caught himself going up there to see what's wrong with baby girl. And so Cynthia felt somewhat uncomfortable. Yes, she did. And she... uh 
dismiss herself from the ladies too so they can pretty much clean up or whatnot and she gonna go see what was going on upstairs with both mike and his daughter kayla but then when they got there when they showed you know the producers or the film crew trying to go up there as well uh when it wasn't a scene that they should have been in the midst of anyway they should have stayed downstairs listening to them ladies talk okay because i know they probably did some non-disclosure um agreement contracts where they couldn't say this that and third but we sure would have been talking to him like how how well you know mike <laughs> we, we would have been doing that behind closed door while they was up there handling business that i really couldn't take because she is a minor and they need to have that time alone i would sure have been down there talking to them women like how long have y'all been in a relationship was it platonic i've been getting it to you and when he did show his ass back up downstairs we would have been talking we would have been cornering him and telling Giving Cynthia a little bit more to think about before 10, 10, 2020 come in. I think that is, or hell, it's 10, 20, 2, 22. I don't know. But anyway, it just is what it is. But, uh, yeah, got up them stairs, and uh, he knocked on her door, and then he was like, you know, can I come in? And everything, evidently, she said, okay. And then he thought about that thing. He said, uh, well, can Cynthia come in, too? And I'm like, can Cynthia come in, too? What the hell? come from hey yeah i'm coming in you ain't got to announce nothing where you going i'm going okay where i'm going you going that's just how we do as a team you know i said people don't understand about marriage they don't understand okay but anyway told her she can come in too and all thing we heard with this girl oh she got an ugly cry oh she got an ugly cry but you know it was hitting her to her very soul now what that was all about i have no idea and then cynthia and him come out talking about, well, she just confused. She just overwhelmed. What the hell is she overwhelmed about? I, I don't understand. Counseling 101. Okay. All they jo- all them joking need counseling. But anyway, moving from that situation. Because that was a piss poor situation. It shouldn't have never been filmed. We don't need to see kids breaking down because they feel like you know their father didn't do what he or dad didn't do what they supposed to have did. And you know, he's trying to get involved, you know, with another uh making of a new family and that girl got some issues okay and maybe she didn't get the time she needed with mike as she was growing up before she got to her age of 17 i don't know but the girl needs some help she don't need to be on this bravo entertainment show she can't handle it and like i said you know i really didn't think noelle needed to be but noelle had her held her own you know even got on her mom about some issues about her low self-esteem and about her bad behavior when it comes to food preparing food for other people even though it was for her but still she don't know what sent their mouth being so you know i give it to noelle very astute young lady uh checking you know shit uh, sizing people up, knocking their asses down with verbalness. So I, I get it. I think she's going to be good. She just kind of confused on where she's going with her sexuality at a time. But, you know, she's at a young age. She's uh, being a little bit promiscuous out there, testing the waters and trying to find what she likes, okay? But, yeah, she, she uh, I can't say anything bad about her. And, I, I'm, you know, Cynthia and other people, uh, how they say, you know, help you raise your children, a uh, village take with well, child, where well, it takes a village to raise a child, uh, that adage is always out there true, with a strong family support, dynamics involved, you know, your child will be cool, because uh, a lot of times they don't go and tell the parents what's really going on, they tell a cousin, they tell a the grandmama, the aunt or somebody, and then it circulates back to the parents so they can kind of uh be cohesive with what how and where and what they need to do to move forward positively for that person so yeah that's what we went with that um let me see but it basically you know with him not having a key for cynthia to come on in the house freely or whatnot because like i said shit, shit shouldn't have been going on anyway which makes me think why the hell is no well up there staying with him you don't have a key to get in the house you don't know what may be going on behind them closed doors some freaky dicky might be going on you know what i'm saying some freaky dicky cynthia might be going on between no well and, and mike and you can't catch them in the act because you ain't got no key you out there bamming and ringing doorbells and shit but that is not my plot a price to play or, or get you straight on what you need to be doing it's just self-explanatory if it flew over your head then let chickens fly in the air okay but we're gonna move on from that situation because it was piss poor after then 
we're going to check in at uh, Kenya. Not Kenya here. We're going to save her for last because that's a fool of shit she did tonight. So, we're just going to pass on by her. We're going to go to Dennis and Portia. One shit said there. Portia going to be a fool for that man. She love that man. Dirty draws. He going to con con constantly keep her in therapy and crying all the same time. Because she was thinking about having another baby with this man, the hot dog king. Okay. So, that's just a telltale waiting to be told. But we are going to move on from that situation because it's boring as hell. And she's stupid as hell. But we're just going to, you know, keep it like it is. She do what she want to do. She cool. Family going to still love her. But we're going to be saying, still saying she's stupid as hell. But uh, then we're going to move on from that situation. Uh, nothing really to report with evil evil just like to eat she's a beautiful woman she looks good uh throughout her pregnancy she likes to be in the midst of drama you know bowls could be thrown and she's sitting up there you know like pass me a piece of chicken pass me a piece of rib got give me some of them potatoes over there them french fries oh yeah pass me that dessert tray over there and you know she's still looking and, and, and carrying on what's going on and throwing shade at the same time so that's all we really have for Eva nothing more new to report she just stays pregnant all the time we really can't go in on her okay um then we got let me see who got candy and Todd uh, that's some, uh, some fake ass shit right there but again Candy has two alliances. She has her mother and her uh, biological family she grew up in. And then she has her new union she's made with uh, Todd and the family that they're trying to raise. But in the good book, the Bible, who we should lean and have some understanding on. When you marry, you leave your mother and your father and you cling to your husband. And your husband clinging to his wife. And y'all become one. That's biblical. That's never going to change. Okay. It don't say go and hang out with your mama. And tell your mama you all your freaking business. Especially if you have no recall of leaving this man. You just mad at him at a time. And you just need somebody to share your thoughts with. Hell can he get on your show then. Get on your YouTube channel. Tell us. Yeah, that would be a stupid ass mistake as well. But if you want to have <laughs> somebody that's going to give you some non biased opinion, come on over to us. We'll get you straight, okay? We'll tell you in your comment section what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Because see, that's what the hell you got here looking. When you sit up there and tell your mama you're looking foolish, fooler, uh, foolish in our eyes. And we might as well go on and tell you down with the fuck shit, okay? Then you going over to your house. Your your family's house uh, that you grew up in, talking to your aunts Bertha and Nora, and you know they're gonna tell you how they feel about the shit, and they gonna throw it back up in your face. But well, we told you about the Joker in the first place when you marry him. But anyway, I said that to say this: can you keep your mouth shut when it comes to telling your mama? everything and hell including your daddy too because if you have no plans to leave todd tucker it's better to let sleeping dogs lie you take the shit he giving you because you bought and paid for him anyway he ain't going nowhere he's just gonna sit up there take whatever he want to take from you until he gets ready to bounce and that's pretty much just how it is okay that's how men do women that's how women do men when they've taken enough they don't put up enough of their foolishness honey they gone nothing you can do or say so uh yeah she was sitting there did y'all notice uh kayla room that was the most unattractive room that candy and todd had kayla in hell i wouldn't want to been there either it was just plain jane no artsy farsy stuff like riley got in her bedroom none of that stuff now they're saying they gonna move um kayla downstairs now nah, hell what you need to do is move her in that other place on y'all property i guess it's the guest house or whatever well you don't have no room for no more guests okay and mama joyce have her own house she should not be coming over staying with y'all anyway okay so that's what kayla and here riley got her own bedroom so she don't need to change yeah kayla need to be out there in that guest house can if you want to do right by her do right by her and put her out there and give her some better decorations make her feel more like a young lady a, a, a young 
adult lady okay so she don't have to be paying no rent out there she could be on y'all property y'all just don't come over there and see what she doing because you know y'all say y'all respect her y'all say uh she has good manners so she ain't gonna do anything to upset you know things or you know that's her daddy get involved and then it's another whole issue but yeah that was a oh that was a struggle um bedroom for somebody who was a teenager and shit so i was like can okay, no, i you kind of fake fraudulent fool got foolery fuckery in you too but then again i always said that about you anyway but i was just strictly going by you doing what you do with toy but that bedroom is stronger even ace bedroom look better than that and i'm pretty sure baby blaze who she's taking kayla's room room gonna look better than that that's a messed up shit can i'm like what kind of room is that? Then that old ass furniture she had. The two uh uh what do you call it side tables, um nightstand table looking like looking like that's somebody well hell I wouldn't even have that and I'm I'm seasoned, I'm fifty two and I, I ain't like that decor of no um side bedroom table. I like what what kind of mess is that? What is Candy giving us? Okay. Can I think you a bad still mama? <laughs> I think you're a bad stuff, Mama Candy. You be showering love and, and, and gifts and shit and, and throwing everybody else room. But when it comes to Kayla, you, you can't do nothing. I got, I'm through with you, Candy. I'm through with you. Because like I said, that was a, a bunch of mess too. So let's get on into Kenya more. Oh, the <laughs> only thing I say, Tanya Sams, keep doing what you're doing. Keep getting on the Kenya Moore skin because you you showing me some girl. You are showing me some you OG material. Hell, I ain't even miss Nene on this particular one. I think you can take Nene's place and, and go go at it with Kenya. But if we want somebody to just be hurling out insults and, and verbalizing cussing words at each other, then Nene needs to stay a little longer. Or we need to bring Marlo in full time. Okay. That handle Miss Kenya Moore. Somebody should have invited Kenya, I mean, uh, Marlo Hampton to this little meet and greet that Cynthia called herself putting together for Tanya Sams and Kenya Moore to clear the air so they can function all together in the same room. Yes, that was uh, Cynthia who brought them women together. But little did she know that uh, Kenya was going to be playing spades. <laughs> okay, while well, she was over there playing Uno. On her ass. And she brought the cookie lady with her. I mean, what kind of mess is that? Well she didn't come exactly with her. But she probably told her when to show up. Because it was on point. When they would start talking. And, and uh, King was doing all this verbal arguing. And throwing and hurling insults at Tanya. Like a little child. Like a. I don't know. A, a child that just feel like they just want to just run over everybody. A mean spirited child. You know what I'm saying? A child ain't got their ass whooped on. You know? That, that kind of a child. But as soon as Kenya walked in the door, spoke to everybody except for Tanya, which is rude as hell. Then she finally sat down to say that she has to look extra special uh, and extra pretty because she came to read a bitch. And I'm like, okay, that, that's too much right there. It started to give me a migraine. You know, but Tanya was sat there and, and held her tongue and... She was trying to handle the situation like a grown person that got sense. Uh, got some morals about herself. You know, uh, Kenya was, you know, trying to put her in her place by don't interrupt me. Be quiet and all this stuff like she's talking to a child out there and whatnot. You know, Ken, I mean, um, Tanya conceded. I mean, uh, she uh, receded and, and just said, okay, let me let you talk. Let me let you get it all out you and this, that, and the third. And, you know, Kenya, the only thing she could do, she was trying to get uh, Tanya to have a rise out of her. You know, get her explosive uh on edge to where she would go uh deep and cut deep like she do nene all the time but uh-uh tanya said girl you gotta fool all you want to and i'm gonna continue to say why do you have to use all these cuss words but yet you call yourself you know being uh, a, a, uh an ambassador of products and services and you know of our country and stuff but you acting like a fool that how can't uh, that how tanya was looking at can i mean uh can you just cool calm and collect like girl do you do you and then um 
Kenya was throwing Cynthia under the bus, and I was very proud of Cynthia. Cynthia stood up and said, hell no, nah, you ain't finna throw me up under the bus. It wasn't this kind of party. And this, I did this, this, this. I had no malicious intent. I had a conversation with you. I had a conversation with Tanya. And that's why I wanted to be, like, in between and try to get y'all together so we can resolve this stuff in some kind of way and put it to rest so we can go on and have, you know, copacetic type of meeting and greeting and everybody can be nice to each other and, and not get at each other's throats you know what i'm saying be cordial to one another but not necessarily agree with one another that type of situation so there was some time when king was trying to throw uh cynthia under the bus and try to make it like cynthia was you know the court uh we call it the conspirator of all this that you know, took place, you know, because that's what Kenya's M.O. is. She want to put shit out there, and then she going to like, well, I didn't say it. Some, some, some said it. But you brought it to fruition, Kenya. You see what I'm saying? Then nobody tell you about the information. You know, you could have sat still and quiet just like Cynthia had sat still and quiet. She didn't want to bring no shit out like that. But now, now you had to bring it out. You had to go tit for tat and, and come and say, you know, uh, well, she's prettier than you and this, that, and the third. And, you know, I asked did anybody want to know if they man was cheating on them. And I was like, shit, I would have turned the table back on you. Do you want to know? Because uh, I've been hearing some stuff by Ma. Then how, how she would have played that. But like I said, you know, it takes Nene to get in Kenya's ass. And Marlo to get in Kenya's ass for things to be copacetic. You know, the playing field is very even. But I like how Tanya handled herself. She was very much uh, aware of the situation. Then, God dog it, when the cookie lady showed up, I was just like, Eva, pass me the uh, dessert because it's going to be good, okay? That's all I want to do is eat and look from side to side. But like I said, even when um, Kenya had, you know, did this whole mess where she was just cussing uh verbally at tanya tanya didn't flinch she just told her you know we grown folks you ain't gotta cuss at me you gotta call me out my name but kenya didn't listen she was just all aggressive how how strong with the conversation being loud and obnoxious all the things that mark don't like from a woman and she can't seem to boss up like that and mark because we saw that in uh the latter uh, part of the show and, uh, you know, Mark was shutting her ass down and she couldn't get in a word edgewise. And she, she wasn't even trying to make him mad because he was going to like, I told you I was thinking out loud. I ain't tell you to do all that and how he was shutting her down where she wanted to include the ladies uh, the next time Mike is in town and they talk about something uh, he wants to have uh what Ma wants Mike to spearhead for him by being a spokesperson or uh, a speaker of whatever engagement he got going on with this thing called Black Lab. Uh they was looking at some space uh at the Bailey uh wine cellar, you know, cause she has this other space that uh Peter had bought to fruition for her. Bought it really actually introduced it to her, but he already had called himself buying it for them. To uh, be able to rent out space and have people come do what they got to do with it. So I, you know, I, 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 I like Peter on that prospect. He had good intentions of, you know, bringing in revenue, but he wanted to spend half of it and then see it to fruition. But I just touched on that little part because I don't really want to get into uh, Kenya's motif or how she can mow down a female, but she can't mow down her man, her husband, when he's being just as rude to her that any other ladies could possibly be to her. But getting back uh, to this cookie lady story, you know, the cookie lady had her time where she wanted to tell Tanya what was happening between her and Tanya's man, Paul, and, you know, she was, uh, Tanya was asking certain questions, you know, about the structure of this Chops restaurant that they were supposed to be hanging out here in Atlanta, uh, a little restaurant, um, a steakhouse, if you will, uh, type of environment they were in, and, you know, how the cook lady was saying Paul was trying to, you know, follow her to the bathroom, they had this sidebar conversation, and, you know, she really didn't want to get involved with them, this, that, and the third, and, 
you know, he was being a little bit aggressive with his, you know, come on speech to her and this, that, and the third. But she didn't really want to feel him or nothing like that. And he was, she was saying he was really trying to get her to come over to the table with the gentleman, or, you know, his uh, entourage he was hanging out with for that day or whatnot. But she conceded and said, you know, no, I ain't going to come this, that, and third. You know, uh, Kanye was kind of, you know, interrogating her nicely whatever but she was like okay you just got you know attracted to a man who happened to be taken even though you were saying he told you he was free uh it is what it is it could have been true it could not have been true but you had your time with me thank you for coming out uh and you know see yourself out <laughs> pretty much oh but honey, i was like tanya if you could only grab kenya moore's hair and take it and bring it all the way down to that table and all that good jazz but she probably would have tried to assault charge on you and this that and the third but it was just good in my mind seeing you reach up and pull her, her ass hair down to that table and and wouldn't let her go okay just wouldn't let her go just 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 let her sit down and holler for a time or two you know what i'm saying but you could have had a lax of judgment. <laughs> I would have been right there with you. But, you know, you had to go to jail and get a assault charge or a misdemeanor. However you they want to put it. And it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth uh, tarnishing your brand to um, get a hold of um, Kenya Moore. Because that's pretty much what people like her. You just right have to put your hands on folks like that. And, and show them where you coming from. Because they just they, they don't never get it. Now you know I don't condone violence and stuff. I'm just saying. The cameras have to be off. It has to be a, a dark alley. Ski mask on and shit like that. And you have to do some do work. <sighs> but that's, man, that's all in my mind. I ain't telling nobody to go do that. I, I don't contribute or condone to any type of violence towards another individual but you know sometimes i tell you ah, sometimes I, sometimes i tell you people like kenya that's the only thing you can see that's all that you can see they make you see red and you just be want to tear into them and that's how portia williams got in, in trouble but she don't fuck with portia no more don't do she. <laughs> you only take that one time one time to mess with somebody and they show you where they coming from and they ain't uh they ain't scared of you in no fashion or form they will go to jail if they have to they're the ones you need to stay away from okay and can y'all already know she ain't fit for a portion no more not not like that not like that at all okay because she know how to down to her knees okay how to down laying flat all right oh boy but that's all i had pretty much guys it was a piss poor episode so but we did what we had to do it was titled um it was Real Housewives of Atlanta season 12, episode 13, hot tea with a side of cookies, okay? Yeah, they could have left that cookie lady sitting somewhere wherever she had to be, but not on this station where I'm looking at her, not on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, because she bought absolutely shit to the uh, talk session, and, you know, Kenya was just being shady as hell, but, you know, Teen Twirl, like I said, when it's time to get on Kenya's ass and I want to take her, hold her, and shake her every which way but loose, that's where we're going to have to go with it. Because Kenya showed her ass. She was very fake, fraudulent, foolery, and had nothing but fuckery going on tonight. And I was so glad uh, OG Tanya Sams was doing her darn job, letting her do whatever she wanted to do, showing her ass, showing you what she really was made of and why you don't want to fuck with Kenya more, okay? But like I said, she going down that same road that Nene has gone down. She's thinking she the ace, ace boon coon type of situation, uh, like she owning shit and all that. So let her just keep going. Nene already in her plight. That's why we ain't seeing much of Nene at this point. And, you know, if Kenya want to go down that same road and she want to have blinders on her eyes, go on and let Kenya. Because, like I said, it will be plenty more people to replace you. Plenty more people to replace you. Okay? So, you know, a hard head make a stop behind like it was always said. And it just is what it is. But, uh, yes, that's all I have for tonight's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 13, Episode 12, Hot Tea with a Side of Cookies, okay? Like I said, full of shit, but, you know, it is what it is, what they gave us, and, uh, hopefully, 
they won't goop us next uh, weekend, next Sunday, and they'll show us this Todd and Candy situation where Todd telling Candy she need to leave that acting shit alone and pay attention to what, what they got going on now. And then Candy gonna come back and say, uh, you getting on my nerves too. That's what I'm looking for. I ain't, I ain't standing about including family members like bringing Mama Joyce in and all that kind of stuff. Nah, we already know she don't like Todd. And she gonna watch her pennies win coins and dollars, however it is. We want to see Todd and Candy get into it on some issues that are definitely, she's not totally in the bones. She's dealing with her infractions that she definitely has with her marriage with Todd. Okay, that's what we want to see because she always up in everybody else's business, especially Portia's business. Uh, trying to, you know, degrade her and say, ooh, he doing this. But what the hell is Todd doing? Okay, what the hell is Todd doing over there with his children? And leaving you with the babies, okay? But if you think you're going to have an acting career and Todd ain't going to be there with you, you got another thing coming. <laughs> you got another thing coming. But that's all I had, guys. Get down in them comments. Y'all interact with one another. <coughs> Y'all keep sharing my videos. Continue to subscribe. Telling people about me. Liking my videos. And I will see you next time. See you later, fam. See you later. And take care of yourselves, okay? Till next time. Peace.